niggas out, I'm that new nigga. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine niggas wanna war, ten niggas on the floor, eleven niggas on the floor, twelve killers wanna war, thirteen. What is up, guys? Today we're gonna be going over a tutorial on how to do an advanced screen replacement, and by advanced, I mean you're replacing a screen in a shot where the angle of the screen is constantly changing. That is why in my clip I started with a side angle, and then I went to the front, and then I went all the way to the other side. So you can see every angle of this screen replacement. A lot of screen replacements are done in 2D space. Somebody will cut out a rectangle and then they'll put the screen replacement behind it. It is slightly more complicated and time consuming when you start changing the angle of the screen. So we are going to go over two ways how to do that. The first method is by using corner pin. This is best if you have just one replacement screen that you're trying to put on your original screen. Method two is going to be masking out the TV screen and then adding a new TV screen behind the cutout mask. Both methods work just as well. You just want to choose the one that's going to be best for your workflow and I think method one with the corner pin is much faster but it's not as great if you have multiple screen replacements like mine in the intro where I replaced it with two separate clips the soccer clip and then the like energy ball clip so if there's a transition in the middle of your screen replacement like that method two with the masking is probably gonna be best for you and a quick personal announcement yesterday was my birthday I just turned 26 I feel like I'm finally settling in and finding my groove when it comes to doing videography full-time YouTube full-time and it just feels great Adobe After Effects actually tweeted my last tutorial on advanced hyperlapses and just happened to be on my birthday and I was like, wow, today's a good day. Adobe After Effects themselves endorses my tutorials, so you too should follow along. Shameless plug. Anyhow, let's get right into this tutorial. This is my clip. I shot it with a gimbal, so it's already relatively smooth and we could probably just start working from here, but your clip won't be perfectly smooth all the time. So I always suggest as a first step to replace your screen in a moving shot like this is to stabilize your shot. So go to effects and presets type in warp stabilizer and drag that onto your clip now you just gotta wait for it to do its thing and once it's done the clip will hopefully be a little more stable I don't wear Prada, just bring me a white tea. I bought some my jealous I still wear the Nikes I roll with some hitters I know you don't now it is just a little more stable got rid of all those little bumps so it'll make it easier for us to animate the screen out of there when we go in and do our keyframes next step is to take your replacement screen this is the clip that you want to put on the TV screen add it on top of your original clip so here's the clip I'm gonna use. It's a little soccer clip. We'll let it render out. And I know I'm rendering everything out in full quality, which slows things down a little bit, but you wanna do that because once we start replacing the screen, we're gonna wanna zoom in and make sure we get those corners really perfect. That's why I'm editing in full quality and I suggest you do the same for screen replacements. Now the next thing to do is throw your corner pin effect on it, drag it onto your replacement screen, then make sure you are on the first keyframe of your replacement screen and then act Activate all of these stopwatches. That'll start the keyframes for that clip. Press U to open up your keyframes, and then we are going to go through and animate this frame by frame. Yes, this is a tedious effect if you want it to look really good. If you go every 10 keyframes and pin the corner, it's not gonna look right. You have to do every single keyframe. I know it's tedious, you just gotta suck it up and do it. So here you drag all your corners to fit the screen exactly where the corners of the screen end. Drag them all to where they're supposed to be. Zoom in if you need to, to get as close as humanly possible so that this looks as realistic as it can possibly be. So there, we got our first keyframe. The screen is replaced in one frame of this entire clip. Now we have to go through and do it for every single frame. The way I like to do it, I do all the upper left keyframes, then all the upper right, then all the lower left, then all the lower right. Not necessarily in that order, but I like to do each one individually just because it's faster. Let's do this upper right corner. So you just go frame by frame and make sure it stays in the same exact spot throughout the entire clip. This does get tedious, but I've found that this is the fastest way to do it. You just take each corner one at a time so you don't have to pan around and do the next corner, pan around to the next corner, pan around again, do the next corner, and then repeat that the entire time. It just wastes time. So I suggest doing each corner on its own first. Well, maybe I might be. I ain't got no feelings. I dare to fight me. I think with a left, but I'm really a right again. Pussy and money, it really excites me. Now we have that upper right corner pinned throughout the entire clip. The next step 
is to go through and do that for every single corner. I'm gonna do the lower right next, and then I'll go up to the upper left and then do the lower left. This is tedious, I'm aware, but if you want it to look good, you have to put in that time. When I'm up at three in the morning, when you be sleeping in the yard, and you know the evil be calling to somebody, better call the ambulance for the EMT. Nigga on the bomb like TNT, but I roll up on a nigga for the GMC. Get the clapping on the middle of the EMT. And once you are done keyframing it, it should look something like this. And this looks pretty decent. I did it a little fast, so it's a teeny bit shaky, but I think you get the point that if you go through and make all of your keyframes really precise, that this can look very good. Now, the downside with corner pin is sometimes your image won't be perfectly straight. All we can do with corner pin is manipulate these corners, but we can't manipulate in between them. So look here. You can see there's a little bit of black screen space there that we would ideally want covered just for the sake of being perfect and realistic, but we can't manipulate this edge here because all we can do is move these corners. When we're filming at a bunch of different angles, not everything is going to be a perfect straight line, especially since I used a lens with some distortion. I used a wide angle 17 millimeter to 28 millimeter Tamron. There was a little bit of distortion in the image, so I can't really make these edges perfect. That is where method two comes into play. And method two just involves masking out the screen and putting your replacement screen behind it. Essentially what we're gonna do is the same exact thing we just did but with a mask and with more points. So this actually takes a little bit longer. So for the masking method what we want to do is just go straight to our base clip. I'm actually going to pre-compose this because we already have it stabilized and I just don't want to mess anything up. So we're gonna pre-compose the stabilized clip. We're gonna call it base TV clip. So now our clip is pre-composed. Press G to open up your pen tool and then we're going to create a mask that covers the entire TV screen that we want to replace. I always start with the corners and then when things start getting distorted and we need to cover those edges, then I go back and add keyframes. By default it is an addition mask so what you want to do is press your clip, press M, and then switch it to a subtract mask. Now it's just removing the screen. And then you wanna click mask path to start your keyframe so we can animate this mask. I'm actually going to duplicate this clip and get rid of the mask on the bottom layer so that we can see the screen throughout the entire clip and just be more accurate. So now back to the tedious stuff, I just gotta go through and mask out the screen throughout this entire clip. Same process, but we have more freedom to add keyframes in to like really be precise with those edges. Open up and look like a packet of mail on Back in Riddell, fucking up the check and chucking up the set and I'm back up the lay over, pay over, way over niggas, no summer, but a nigga stay over, nigga. And now I have gone through and done all the corners of the mask. We are going to go through and just add a couple more keyframes to cover these bits of the screen that are not covered by doing a mask with just the corners. So I'm going to create another keyframe here and then just drag it up a bit to cover the entire screen just to be more precise. And then you just have to go through and adjust that to cover the full screen. This is the advantage of using the mask method. You can shape your mask however you want. I'm a relish on the bun, I got the money to fund the one is what I wanted and when I wanted I want to feel like you can't fund on it. I got your ex chick and your next chick on a pole. And now once you finish creating your mask you can disable that bottom layer. In fact you can just entirely delete that because we don't really need that. I think I did a pretty decent job here of cutting out that screen. Now all we have to do is put a replacement clip under it. So let's take that same soccer clip, but this time we're going to put it under the screen since we cut out the screen. Here's where things are a little different. We're going to have to animate the replacement screen in 3D space because we are not using corner pin. Corner pin automatically shifts things to move in 3D space. Here we need to do that all manually. However, you have a lot more freedom and you can make things look exactly the way you want and you can even switch the screen in the middle. Say for example, I wanted to do a different screen right here. I could just put a different clip right in this area. Let's take this electricity clip I used, use this as the second clip for the replacement. And now we just need to animate those replacement screens to look realistic. So let's start with this first one. We're going to press toggle switches and modes and then make it a 3D layer. Might as well do it for the electricity clip as well. Now you wanna press S, make sure you're on the first keyframe of your clip. Start the keyframing by pressing the stopwatch, start the position keyframes, and start the orientation keyframes. 
get to those by pressing S, P, and R. S for scale, P for position, R for orientation. Now, go to the middle of the clip because that's going to be easiest to put in the right position. So now we're going to scale our clip down to fit the screen. Then we can move it around. It looks like we're angled a bit this way. So you want to switch your orientation keyframes to kind of fit the angle of the screen. And here's where it's nice using this method. We don't have to make it fit the screen perfectly. We just need to make sure that our replacement screen is all within the corners of the mask we cut out of the original clip. So we need to scale down the first clip as well and then orient it to be facing the same way as the TV approximately. Again, we don't have to be perfectly precise. You just want to make this look realistic as possible. So try to be as precise as possible, but honestly, it's it's literally impossible to be 100% precise. So just make it look good. And now we have this. And honestly, that looks pretty good already. I'm just gonna go through and smooth out the keyframes a bit to kind of match the motion of the clip. These keyframes are moving a lot faster, so I'm gonna do an ease in on the final keyframes so that the first keyframes are moving a little faster and the last ones are moving a little slower. And then we get this. Now we have an issue right here where the screen is not fitting entirely and it's rotating a bit too fast, so let's add another keyframe and make it match the orientation of the screen as well in 3D space. I think we're gonna have to increase the scaling a bit, adjust your position, and that looks pretty decent to me. I do not want these to be easy ease in or ease out. I just want them to animate like regular keyframes for now. It's looking pretty decent for that first part of the clip. Then the animation starts separating from the orientation of the TV. So let's go in and reorient this again to match the screen. And again, this does not need to be perfectly precise. You just need to get it to where it looks pretty realistic. And that does not look super realistic to me. You can see where the keyframes are changing. We're gonna have to smooth those out. And actually, let's make all the keyframes standard keyframes. We'll smooth it out later. And that's starting to look way better there. I can still see where the keyframes are changing, but you can go through and see if it looks like you're replacement screen is matching the screen throughout the clip. Here, it still looks like it's scaled up a bit too much. Let's reorient it a bit. And you just gotta play around with these until you get it right. Sorry for being intolerant, I got this violent temper. I like when I'm cold, I shoot a nigga, make him die in December. You been a bitch as long as I can remember you say- Eventually, you should get something that looks pretty realistic that you like. I did it kind of fast for the sake of this tutorial, but the next thing you want to do is select all of your keyframes and control click. I will auto bezier them a bit and just kind of smooth out those keyframes a bit. Now we could just go on and do the second half of this clip. And again, same method. It's a 3D clip, press R to open up orientation, S, scale, P for position, click all those stopwatches, and then press U to open up your keyframes, and then you just go through and animate this one the same exact way we just did on the last clip. I'm just getting started, I hit on my targets, I promise I'm very defined. If I do not win the Grammy, they said it, I blow that bitch up in an air when done. And once you have something you kind of like, select all your keyframes, and then control click, and that'll just smooth them out a bit. And then in order to make this look a little smoother, I would go into your mask for your TV clip, the original clip, and feather it a bit. So just press F and then add maybe five pixels worth of feather and that just makes it it makes it look a little softer and realistic and one thing you could do to smooth out that transition is to literally just add a transition i'm just going to use a preset motion row transition right here and voila now we have a little transition within our screen replacement and that is essentially it one last thing i would suggest doing to make your screen replacement look even better is to color correct this to blend the screen with your original clip i'm just going to go through the process of how i would blend these two with lumetri colors I'm gonna add a Lumetri color layer to my original clip. I think the highlights should be higher. In order to kind of match the screen, let's make the room a little colder because it's really warm. I'm doing this really quick just to show you guys how I would blend these just a little bit further and make it look a little nicer. Let's add some contrast, lift the shadows a bit, add some saturation, and that's already looking a little better blended. And that looks far better than it originally looked already to me. I'm actually gonna add some more blues to the mid-tones. Drop the reds a bit. And there, I didn't spend much time on that, but I'm showing you how doing some color correction to blend your clips just really helps make things look a lot more high quality and a lot more realistic. Cause this, this looks like I just threw an effect on there. The screen is a lot more contrasty than the background. 
So I added some contrast, lit up the background a bit. Now it just blends better. One last thing I would do to blend these clips together is add a good LUT on top of everything. This is something I do on pretty much all my videos. And what that's gonna do is just make the colors consistent between the actual background and the screen. Add an adjustment layer above everything do a lumetri color layer and then put a LUT on top of the image and this will just blend the colors further this makes everything look that much more realistic because the colors are blended and everything just flows together nicely and once you do all that hopefully you get something like this a realistic screen replacement using these tools you should be able to replace your screens with anything you want i know it's tedious but the more time you put into these the better they look i say that in every tutorial when it comes to vfx the more time you put into it the better it's gonna look that's it for the tutorial if you you guys haven't seen my advanced hyperlapse tutorial I posted last make sure to check that out as well that's a very fun tutorial I did a few weeks ago make sure to check it out I'll put a card on the screen and subscribe to the channel I am still trying to grow my Instagram a bit so if you haven't followed me on Instagram make sure to follow me on there at Kozak right here I always post on there whenever I have a new tutorial coming out so follow along on there subscribe to the channel and let me know if you guys use any of my tutorials to create these effects feel free to tag me in them on Instagram or DM them to me and I would love to watch what you guys create using these tutorials anyhow that's it for the video thanks for watching guys and I will see you guys in the next video peace I don't wear Prada just bring me a white tea I bought some my jealous I still wear the Nikes I roll with some hitters I know you don't like me I shit on you niggas now bring me some white you think I'm a killer well maybe I might be I ain't got no I dare you to fight me, I sleep with a leopard